Mainstream gaming consoles like the upcoming PS5 and Xbox Series X will never be able to outperform the PC Master Race when it comes to graphics performance. And that's okay because they're not really trying to. Instead, they're trying to aim for the mainstream market and hit a certain price point. To do that, you do have to make some compromises on performance. But if you don't like compromise and you still want a console-esque gaming system, then you might want to consider building in this. This is the Sliger CL520, or as they like to call it, Consol, and it's up there with some of the better console-like PC cases that I've built in. You can pack some really powerful hardware into this thing and power a 4K gaming experience, no problem. But how good is it compared to cases like the Sentry 2.0 and Node 202? Let's take a look. Firstly, the Sliger console comes in at two sizes. The one that I have here is the 8 liter CL520, but there is also a slightly larger version that can fit three slot graphics cards and larger CPU coolers. On the exterior, the CL520 has a very similar design aesthetic to the other Sliger cases that we've looked at here on the channel, like the Cerberus and SM580. So it's Built like a tank, it's relatively heavy for the size, but I will give a thumbs up to Sliger's design team for keeping things relatively clean and minimal. It's clean enough that it will blend in with its environment, perfect for a living room gaming system, and the front I.O. is exactly what users would want for a console-like case. In some ways, it does look a bit dated, mostly thanks to that power button, but I might be being a bit picky. At 8 liters, it is fairly compact and fits right between the Sentry 2.0 and Node 202, but overall, I wouldn't consider the CL520 to be as space-optimized as the Sentry. As with a lot of Sliger's recent cases, there is quite a bit of wiggle room and extra space in the interior, even after installing some fairly conventional conventional ITX hardware. Reference length cards have a ton of room in front of them and above them, and the SFX power supply has plenty of room for cable management. So if you're a die-hard small form factor enthusiast, you probably wouldn't have minded this being just a bit smaller, but on the bright side, it does make the CL520 fairly easy to build in for beginners. CPU coolers up to 53 millimeters tall are compatible here, and the one that I've got installed in there at the moment is the CryoRig C7G with a slim 92 mm Noctua fan. Graphics card support is fairly strong here for an eight liter case. You can fit a two slot card up to 324 millimeters in length and 157 millimeters in height, including the power connectors. If you have a graphics card above two slot thickness, which is actually fairly common these days, you might wanna opt for the larger CL530, which has a three slot card support. And it might just be me, but I personally think that's almost too much graphics card length and height to be supporting. At the end of the day, this is a small form factor case and there really aren't that many graphics cards out there beyond 300 mils in length. Now these slim console-like cases are very well known for being very poor at exhausting the hot air from within the case. Essentially, once you start gaming on them, all of that hot air kind of becomes trapped and recirculated within the components. So Sliger have attempted to overcome this by mounting two slim uh, 120mm Noctua fans directly behind the graphics card. Although one of the fans is pretty much completely blocked by the graphics card riser cable. Regardless, it's highly recommended that you run these fans as exhaust to help extract the hot air from your GPU. Just keep in mind that if you're using the CL520 in its horizontal orientation, those fans won't be as effective as they'll be pointed towards the floor or desk, but it'll still be worth having them there spinning at a lower RPM. One thing I I will say about these fans though, I'm not sure if it was really the correct design decision versus just supporting thicker graphics cards. For example, if you removed those fans from the design and shifted the PCI expansion slots back, you could quite easily support two and a half slot cards. But then on the flip side, without those fans to extract the heat, you might not actually get any thermal and noise benefit from running those larger cards. And this is actually the first case that I have ever reviewed that just doesn't support two and a half inch drives, and they've kind of just recommended that users go with M.2 storage instead. Now, motherboards with two M.2 slots are becoming a lot more common these days, so I don't really see this as a problem, 
But still, I've reviewed cases that are four liters in volume that you can fit two two and a half inch drives. So I'm not really sure how I feel about that because there is quite a lot of extra volume and breathing room in this case where that could have been done. But let me know your thoughts on that down below. Now, in regards to thermal performance, it's clear that those side exhaust fans are helping out quite a bit. By spinning them at just 900 RPM, you can reduce GPU thermals by up to five degrees. As the CL520 isn't overly ventilated, these fans are pretty much a must. I also didn't find sitting the case horizontally to worsen GPU thermals that much either, provided that you use the included case feet to elevate the case a couple of centimeters. And lastly, there's a very small improvement by flipping the case so that the graphics card is towards the top. This will allow some additional GPU exhaust flow. Overall, GPU thermals are about average with the GTX 1080 Ti settling in at about 72 degrees C, about on par with the larger NZXT H200 when that has two 120mm intake fans and the NZXT H1. It's the much better choice here over the Fractal Design Node 202, but isn't as good as the Sentry 2.0. The Sentry is a much more ventilated case than the CL520 and although it doesn't have any active exhaust fans, it's ventilated enough to accommodate enough GPU exhaust. But let's not forget that the CL520 can accommodate larger graphics cards than the Sentry 2.0. So although there is a small thermal difference there and the Sentry does run a little bit cooler, you can overcome that small thermal gap by using a larger graphics card. In reality, if you do use a longer triple fan card in the CL520, you should pretty much get the best thermals out of any console sized PC case. Now my usual 9900K test system for ITX builds was a bit too much to ask for this sub 50 mil CPU cooler, but here's what you can expect from an eight core Ryzen 3700X at full load in Blender. So again, we're using the CryoRig C7G here with the fan swap to a slim 92 2 mil Noctua fan, and that's perfectly capable of cooling this CPU. For gaming builds in this case, I'd highly recommend using the Ryzen 3300X, 3600, or the 3700X here, which would also be a great option for a more production focused build, and Intel's 10600K would also be a great fit. Overall, the Sliger CL520 is one of the better console like cases that you can buy right now. It's not overly special and optimized, but it's a great option for those interested in this form factor. I'd also consider the CL530, which is the three slot variant. It is a bit chunkier than this one, but it's much more of a unique and special case in my opinion. You can get the price down on the CL520 to 149 US or 179, including those two slim Noctua fans. And that does include free shipping within the United States. I do think the Sentry 2.0 is the better case overall, but you can't actually buy it anymore. So it's almost irrelevant. And I do think NZXT's H1, although a bit bigger at 13 and a half liters, is also something to consider as well, especially for a living room gaming PC. So if you are interested in building a console killer PC, I will leave a link to the CL520 down below, as well as some of the hardware that I've used in this build and would highly recommend. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.